Anthropic just released prompt caching with Claude. This is on the heels of Google's announcement of context caching just a number of weeks ago, which is available in Gemini 1.5 Flash as well as Gemini 1.5 Pro. And this is also something that we have seen from DeepSeek, which is a company that has a ton of really great open source models that are particularly geared to coding. Now, the first thing is this is really interesting for Claude 3.5 Sonnet because it's arguably one of the best models out there, especially for developers. A lot of developers swear by Claude 3.5 Sonnet that it just is the best model out there, at least at the time of recording this video. So without further ado, I'm just going to go over the blog post a little bit. So prompt caching, which enables developers to cache frequently used context between API calls is now available in the Anthropic API. One thing to know with this is it doesn't mention that this is available on AWS where they also have Claude 3.5 Sonnet or whether it's going to be available on GCP. Right now it looks off the bat that it is going to be available through the Anthropic API. Hopefully it will come to other vendors like AWS in time. With prompt caching, customers can provide Claude with more background knowledge and example outputs while reducing the cost by up to 90% and the latency by up to 85% for long prompts. Prompt caching is available today in public beta for Claude 3.5 Sonnet, as well as Claude 3 Haiku, with the Claude 3 Opus support coming soon. They mentioned a number of different use cases where prompt caching can be useful. And some of these are, for example, conversational agents. Say if you have a chat history that's particularly long, the benefit of using prompt caching is as soon as you pass in that key value pair, where it's essentially passing in a value of ephemeral to add it to that context caching, all of a sudden for those subsequent prompts, you're going to be reaching for that cache so long as it's in that cache. Now, since it is an ephemeral cache, this isn't something that's going to last or persist for a long period of time. Let's say you're within ChatGPT or Perplexity or the Claude interface or whatever it might be. Now, what those different interfaces do, and they all do it a little bit different, but they essentially pass a portion of the chat history with each subsequent turn into the LLM. Now, if you're able to have those historic messages or even the most recent messages stored within this context caching, it's going to save you a ton of money because you're not going to have to pass in all of those recognized tokens that have already been processed by the LLM. That's one example with a conversational agent where it could be useful. Now, obviously coding assistants are a huge one because there's going to be a ton of use cases where say, if you pass in a ton of context, let's just say you pass in an entire repo into a context window. Like we're getting to the point where you're going to be able to do those types of things. Now, the limit on Claude right now is 200,000 tokens of input, and that's a pretty decent amount of code. And I'd imagine in a year or two years, we're probably going to be within the millions range in terms of the amount of context that you can pass in. We already have a Google Gemini where you can pass into up to 2 million tokens, which is available through their API right now. I'd imagine whether it's OpenAI or Anthropic that we're going to be able to pass in more and more context. Obviously, long document processing, that's going to be a huge one. Say you pass in something like an SEC filing and you want to ask questions about it, that could be a good use case. Detailed instruction set, say you have a chat bot or something like that on a website and you have a particularly long, whether it's a system prompt in combination with the context of whatever you're feeding to it, if you have that cached and you don't need to continually send that in and be billed at that full rate, obviously you're going to save both the time as well as the cost that's going to be associated with that. A few others here, agentic search, talk to books, papers, documentation, podcast transcripts, etc. There's just a ton of really useful use cases. So this is really going to shine, especially in applications where you're passing in a ton of different contexts, whether it's with chat history, or whether it's with some of these other examples that I had mentioned. Here's a table where they break it all down. Chat with a book of 100,000 tokens cached with a prompt. So the latency without the caching at all, the time to first token would be 11.5 seconds. It has to process all of that information that you're sending it. And that time to first token is that essentially that first vowel or that first word that you get back from the LLM. 
quite a long time for a long prompt. Obviously, 100,000 is a ton, but still a significant amount of time. Now, with context caching, is that's going to be 2.4 seconds, which is almost 80% faster. And then the cost reduction is going to be 90% cheaper. So this is pretty much a no-brainer for leveraging that prompt caching feature. They also have some examples of multi-shot prompting as well as multi-turn conversation. Many shot prompting with 10,000 tokens would be 1.6 seconds for the first first time to first token. And then the cost reduction for the subsequent ones would be 86% as well as a 31% increase in terms of the speed. So a 10 turn conversation with a long system prompt, the initial time to first token could be 10 seconds, latency with the caching 2.5 seconds, an increase of 75%, as well as a cost reduction of 53%. Cash prompts are priced within the number of tokens you cash and how frequently you use that content. Writing to the cash costs 25% more than our base input token price for any given model, while using the cash content is significantly cheaper, costing only 10% of the base input token price. To give you an idea for Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, it is $3 per million tokens. And then for the prompt caching feature, it's going to be slightly more, so 25% more at $3.75 for that initial caching of the tokens. And then once you're actually querying it, it's going to be 30 cents per million tokens. Now, the one thing to note is the output is still $15 per million tokens. Now for Claude 3 Opus, I don't imagine a lot of people are necessarily going to be using this right now, at least not until maybe Claude 3 Point Opus comes out because it is significantly more expensive. Now, with that being said, it is available on Haiku and it is very cheap. To read the cache, it is going to be three cents to read per million tokens of cache read with an output of only $1.25 per million tokens. And Claude 3 Haiku is a very competent model. It's also a very quick model. So this is something that's going to be like a GPT-4.0 mini type of competitor, maybe not quite as capable as GPT-4.0 mini, but mind you, it might make sense with this new prompt caching feature available. To get started with the API, it's really straightforward. All that you need to do is pass in the key of cache control into the message that you want to have cached. Let's just say you have a really long amount of text or code or whatever it is within here. And then you can specify that it's going to be type of ephemeral. And then that's going to be what is ultimately cached. You can decide what or how much you want to cache by simply passing in this key value pair here into your different messages there. The interesting thing with this is the cache has a five minute lifetime and it's refreshed each time the cache content is used. So you have to keep the cache warm by using it and interacting with it. Now they probably did this to go a different route than what Google did where they charge you per hour of the number of tokens that are stored within their system. Now, with that being said, maybe developers will come up with a creative solution to keep this quote unquote warm with a cron job asking for the LLM to respond back with a word every four minutes or something. Just a few other things. The minimum prompt length is 1,024 tokens for Claw 3.5 Sonnet, as well as Claw 3 Opus. Mind you, this isn't quite available yet. And then it is 2,048 tokens for Claw 3 Haiku. They do mention some best practice. So to optimize prompt caching performance, they say to cache stable reusable content like system instructions or background information, large context, or frequent tool definitions. But you're also able to monitor the performance of the API. There's going to be a couple of keys that you can access the number of tokens written to the cache when creating a new entry, as well as the number of tokens that are read. There are some examples within here. There's a large context example here. There's also a caching tool definition within here. Say you have a ton of different tool calling definitions. You can also use this with function calling. Say you have a number of different tools and then you want to cache those tools so you don't have to continually pass them in. You can also use them on tools. That's also a really interesting thing to see as well. And then in terms of a multi-turn conversation, Here's just to give you an idea how this could work. Hello, can you tell me about the solar system? You can set the cache controls there. We get the response back without the cache controls. And then the subsequent user message, it just has that cache control with the subsequent messages there. Just to give you an idea on how you could potentially use it, 
You could use it within a multi-turn conversation where you're just continually caching all of the different things that you're telling it. But otherwise, that's pretty much it for this video. If you're interested, you can click through their documentation, which are really great. I'd encourage you to check this out, try it out. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.